All right, this is Mehdi and Angelina. Today, we're going to talk about another advanced RAG technique, which is augmented RAG with knowledge graph. So a question we get to ask all the time about productionizing RAG system is uh, how to enable more accurate, more grounded, and more logical information retrieval uh, and response generation when dealing with very complex user questions. For example, this is a simple question. Let's say uh, a user is asking which continent is the Eiffel Tower located in? If we have context about Eiffel Tower is located in Paris, Paris is capital of France, France is located in Europe, and then as humans, we will be able to figure out that, okay, the Eiffel Tower is located in Europe. But within a RAG system, it's more complex to answer because you have to understand the relationship among these entities. So today's video is going to be an intro video about knowledge graph with RAG and how they can improve the performance of RAG system. So let's dive in. Awesome. So the idea here is, you know, we know LLMs and how they have re revolutionized NLP world. However, we all know that there are some limitations to LLMs. And two of these important problems are, one is the hallucination, meaning that when we use LLMs to generate some text, then it is very likely that we get inaccurate or inconsistent information. And the other thing is that LLMs struggle with real world knowledge and reasoning, so they they don't have necessarily their reasoning capability. They might have a little bit, but having complex reasoning capability is not there yet. So how can we address these two problems when we are working with LLM? One potential solution is to use RAG systems with LLMs, and we can use external knowledge and integrate that into the LLM to prevent LLM from hallucination. And it generates text that is grounded based on facts. This solution is called RAG Retrieval Augmented Generation. We have talked about RAG in some videos in more details. We recently had a video about all you need to know about basic RAG, where we introduce how to build a basic RAG from scratch and contrasting how to do that versus frameworks like LandChain and Llama Index. Check that one out if you're interested. All right. How RAG can help? We integrate and inject external knowledge into LLM, but how can we do that? Um, basically, we will represent our external knowledge as some kind of vector. And then we use a data store to store all of these vectors. When we answer a question and generate response, we can do a search on this vector database using metrics like um, dot products or semantic similarity, and then find the closest, most similar vectors to the question, and then fed the corresponding text into the uh, LLM to generate the response. That's how RAG system can help and alleviate this uh, hallucination problem. So this is the ar general architecture of RAG. When LLM is going to generate the response, it has some grounded source or context rather than just using its internal knowledge, which is very prone to hallucinations and inconsistent generations. However, that said, RAGs have some limitations. When we do RAG search, we are using some kind of semantic similarity and vectorizing everything in the RAG. So here, because we are vectorizing all the passages, then we are losing all the connections and relationships that exist in the text because we are basically flattening the entire text and represent it as a bunch of vectors. So we are not really encoding all of the semantic intent in the text. That's one of the problems with RAG in general or with any kind of vector vectorization. So to put in more plain English, this process of vectorization of text chunks is really 
just embedding, turning, let's say the whole sentence, one sentence is a chunk. Then we're turning the sentence as a whole into a vector representation. So there is no distinguish between like one word in the sentence versus another word, not to mention their in interrelationship is not, it's embedded in the embeddings, but not necessarily like uh, very target, very, it doesn't pay, I don't know what's the right word to say. Explicitly, right? We are not explicitly yeah. describe the relationship between the words or the, the entities or the concept, right? The sentences. Yeah. Um, so that's basically, so we're losing, right? We are, we are not really inputting all of that information. And, and depending on your le the length of the chunks, the bigger the chunk, we probably are losing more information because you're using, like, let's say, 300 dimensions, 300 numbers to represent 500 words versus five words, it must mean different, right? You must be exactly. looking for when you're using bigger chunks. Yes. So when we are representing anyway, we are compressing a sentence or a paragraph with a vector. So we are losing some information by vectorizing that. Right. right. So that makes... that's the first limitation of the RAG vector search. The second one is the key relevant details that are embedded in the passages and they are spread across multiple sentences are going to get lost again in this process of vectorization. Because when you are vectorizing a paragraph consisting of multiple sentences, because we do not encode explicit relationship between, let's say, agents and you know, sentences, things like that, again, we are losing all of that information in basic rag by vectorizing the data. The third limitation is each passage is matched independently because when we are embedding text chunks, each text chunk is just a separate passage. And when we are doing the search, we are just going over each one of these independently. So here the facts cannot be connected or aggregated depending on the question that we are going to ask. This is another problem. And because of that, again, we are losing a lot of the information. To summarize, the relationship between words within a sentence, within one, in one vector versus cross vectors, cross sentence, cross chunks, we don't have that explicitly using the RAG system. We don't have explicitly. Yeah. We're just relying on... The embedding model, because that embedding model has been trained on a lot of data. So mm -hmm. it has learned semantically the relationship between different concepts. But when we are vectorizing, we are not explicitly coding those relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we are missing in the vectorization technique in RAG. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and the other challenge is the ranking and matching process. Um, so when you do the search, we try to use metric like semantic similarity and find the closeness between the user question and all of the vectors that we have. However, it's not exactly clear, right? We are using mathematical formulas, semantic similarity, cosine similarity, things like that. But still, it is not 100% clear if this vector is similar. Semantically, we know that it is similar, but again, it's not 100% clear what happened. In terms of explainability, we simply rely on the semantic meaning of the words and the vectors, but it is not exactly like uh, explainable in a very clear way. The last challenge is there is no encoding of relationships or structures or rules or any other connections between the content because we simply just give the text into the embedding model and it gives us a vector as an output. Mm -hmm. So we are not really encoding explicitly any kind of relationship, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if I say Washington DC is the capital of United States, we just simply pass the entire sentence into embedding and it gives us a vector. But explicit, I mean that we somehow exactly say that, for example, capital of is the relationship between Washington, D.C. and the United States. Or, for example, Washington, D.C. is a city, is a type of city. So these kinds of relationships are not there when we are just simply vectorizing the text. 
Right. So in a sense, it's largely relying on the internal trained knowledge from the LLMs to un really understand what's going on in this specific uh, data set versus there may be a better way to understand the interrelationship among the words uh, and the relationship, the entities, the relationship within a specific data set that is better than RAG because RAG is like one size fits all. You put the LLM on top of this data and then whatever is represented from the internal knowledge from the large language model is going to be shown from the model output versus can we be more customized to the data set, the data set you're trying to get information from. Yes, true. LLMs are really good at understanding the relationship between different concepts and all that. But in RAG, there is no relationship. Just we are embedding a bunch of documents into vectors and then do the search. This search mm -hmm. mechanism, there is no LLM involved. There is not any explicit relationships encoded into these vectors. When you are doing search, you cannot explicitly get all the relationships. We simply relying on whatever metric that we are using, like semantic similarity or dot product or any other mm -hmm. distance metric. All right. So RAG system do not have access to network structure data because all the data is compressed into a bunch of vectors. So the interconnections between the facts and the sentences is not there which makes it impossible to capture the relationships between the facts, which leads into this rag struggle to achieve true relevance and aggregate the facts, which again, limit their ability to reason when we are going to answer a very complex questions or a doing a chain of reason. So mm -hmm. this is basically the limitation of the rag systems. Right. This slide can be used for preparation for an interview. You're asked about what's the drawbacks of a rack system. Check out Mehdi's slide. True. All right. So now that we mentioned the limitations of RAG, how can address those limitations? So here is when knowledge graphs come into the picture. So what is a knowledge graph? Very high level knowledge graph is a graph of some nodes and edges. So what are these nodes and edges? These are a bunch of entities and the relationships between these entities in a particular domain. You can create or construct a knowledge graph over chemistry, for example, concepts or healthcare or general knowledge. But basically knowledge graph is nothing but a set of concepts and the relationships between them. You represent that as a graph. So there are two main components in a knowledge graph. There is the vertex or vertices and the edges between them. On the right hand side, you can see an example of a knowledge graph here. You can see these are the nodes and there are some edges or relationships between them. For example, here, this, this node is Da Vinci and Da Vinci has painted Mona Lisa. And then, for example, James likes Mona Lisa. You can see that we are explicitly creating relationship between each node, right? Each concept, if there is any actually, but we are defining these relationships explicitly. The basic unit of a knowledge graph is called a triple or triplet, meaning that if you're going to represent knowledge graphs, you have a list of these triples. The triple is consists of three different components. We have subject, we have the relationship or predicate, and we have the object. For example, this is a fact. Da Vinci painted Mona Lisa. This is a triple and which, so we are representing all the facts and everything using this triple format. And in the graph, you can see exactly that triple or triplet. So yeah. this is an example. James is born on this particular date. So mm -hmm. you see that we can describe the facts using this format triples. They, they all look like a sentence, like who did what? 
So it's like a sentence. Yes. So if you think about it as a very high level, the triples, the relationship usually is the verb, right? The action that happened. So Da Vinci painted Mona Lisa. Washington, D.C. is capital of United States. Mm. Yeah, uh, that, make, that makes sense. So this is the definition of knowledge graph. We have an explicit description of a set of concepts and the relationships between them. Question for you. So, Nedi, you did a knowledge graph research when you were in your doctor's program, right? So, this was one of your expertise. Yes. Back then, we wouldn't call it knowledge graph. Knowledge graph became popular in 2012 when Google announced their knowledge graph of the world. Before that, we were calling it ontologies and semantic networks and things like that. And Knowledge graph is essentially an, an ontology in the semantic web world, but it's like a more loose term because ontologies have a lot of restrict rules and all that. But yes, I have done quite a bit of knowledge graphs and how to create one, how to integrate knowledge graph with machine learning. That was my research. I see. Yeah. So, so we welcome your opinions, your explanation on this topic for this video since you're already expert in both areas, both in knowledge graph and RAG system. Okay. All right. I think that's it for today. We'll move the solution in using knowledge graph together with RAG to a session two video, since this video is becoming longer than we wanted and see you in the next session. Absolutely. See you. Okay.